Good afternoon and welcome to your science review with Mr. Blades. Let's get started. Now you can see that I've already written down our knowns and our unknowns, V1 prime, V2 prime in the second angle, and drawn a picture to describe our situation. Now, because the two objects are identical as stated in the problem, we can make one assumption that the two angles, theta one and theta two added together equal 90 degrees. Now, because of this, we know our second angle. The first angle is 60, and to add up to 90, it is 30. But because that angle is down from the horizontal, it is negative 30 or 330 degrees. This is important. I've also drawn out our equations. We need one for the x component and one for the y component. Now, because the masses are all the same, we can just cancel them straight out. Okay. Now we are going to start working through with the x component. I've run, written up the trigonometric identities for our x and y velocities, and we will use those for the rest of this video. Now our x component of velocity for the first object is exactly 4. We assume that the object is traveling exactly horizontally. Now I'm also writing in the trigonometric calculations for the x components of the velocities after the collision. We know the angles, so we can write these in. So we have 4 equals 1 half, which is cosine of 60, times v1 prime plus the square root of 3 over 2 times v2 prime. That's the cosine of 330 degrees. We can factor out 1 half from both sides, and we end up with 8 equals minus square root of 3 times v2 prime equals v1 prime. Now, we can't go any further than this at this stage. We're going to have to solve the y equation and then set them equal to each other. So, same deal with the y. However, our initial velocity in the y direction for both objects is 0. And that leaves us with v1 prime times the sine of 60 degrees plus v2 prime times the sine of negative 30 or 330 degrees. Again, we can figure those out. And 0 equals v1 prime times the square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half v2 prime. And again, we solve for v1 prime, but this time by dividing by net square root of 3 divided by 2, and then subtracting the v2 prime term from both sides. This leaves us with v2 prime divided by square root of 3 equals v1 prime. And now we can set those two solutions equal to each other and solve for v2. So 8 minus square root of 3 times v2 prime is equal to v2 prime divided by the square root of 3. We're going to multiply by the square root of 3 to get rid of that denominator on both sides. And we end up with 8 times the square root of 3 minus 3 v2 prime equals v2 prime. We're going to add 3 v2 prime to both sides. That gives us 8 square root of 3 equals 4 v2 prime. And if we divide both sides by 4, we get v2 prime is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 meters per second. Now we can plug that value for v2 prime into one of our equations for v1 prime. And if I do it with v2 prime over square root of 3, I end up with v1 prime is equal to 2 meters per second. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in class.